Hey, this is Carrie Canary Quilts, and we are on week three of our Dear Jane Quilt Along. And if you're new here, I'm using the Dear Jane add-on for EQ8. All right, you got Future Carrie here, and I just wanted to let you know if you don't want to go through any of the EQ8 stuff here, you can look in the description down below, and I have all the blocks time-stamped. So if there's a certain block you want to look at, you can just hit that time-stamp, and it'll take you directly to that block. But... You don't necessarily need that to do this. There is a book. I'm a little unfamiliar with the book, but um, I think that you can copy patterns out of that. And there are other resources. There's some paper piecing packets you can buy and some acrylic templates. But anyway, I've got all that linked down below if you're interested. Um, I'm going to show you the EQ8 way that I'm doing it. And if you want to give it a try, again, I've got the links down below. Or if you've got EQA and the Dear Jane add-on, you can follow along. Anyway, I am, we're on week three. We are doing blocks E3, F2, F8, K5, and TR3. And what I've done is I've added those to my sketchbook. I'm in the um, DJ2 progress chart file. I like working in this file because then I'm just working on the blocks that I want to work on and then I can add them in here and see make sure that I'm okay with what I'm doing with the colors and everything so what I've done is I've added the blocks we're working on to our sketchbook right here I want to recolor them I am going to be using these bright orange batiks this week so I want to recolor them to the bright orange and then add them into my chart make sure I'm happy with what I'm doing so let's open E3 we're in the block work table. I'm going to color and I'm going to find a bright orange color, which weighs orange. I don't know if they have the brightest of orange in here, but let's try that. All right, so there's orange. I'm going to add that. I want to open this one and it should still have my orange open and I'm just using the spray can. The spray can lets you recolor one color all the way around the block. So that's what I'm doing. Add that to sketchbook. And the next one, color, spray that, add to sketchbook. Open the next one. Let's color that orange, add to sketchbook, and then our border block. Color that, that's gonna be orange. Add that to the sketchbook. All right, so there's my recolorings. I am going to take just a moment and get rid of the gray ones so that I have just the orange ones available to me. And I'm gonna do that by clicking on the block, hitting the delete button down here, and you have to do it twice. And it gets rid of the block. All right, now I just have the orange ones in my sketchbook. So let's go back to the quilt work table and we want to start adding these in and see how they look. So we've got E3. I'm going to click on that, come over to E3, and put it in there. And we have F2, F8. Whoops, I didn't click on it. F8 is this one. And K5. And then TR3. So... I'm happy with that. That looks good. So I'm going to print these out. It's really early on right now, so I'm probably going to be happy with the way it looks. I don't want to have the same colors next to each other. I'm trying to avoid that, but right now they're pretty well mixed up. And I'm probably going to, there's so many blocks, I'm probably going to be using orange again at some point. But I'm happy with what is happening now and what I'm seeing. So let's print these out and get ready to, um, it's probably foundation paper piecing for all of these. So I'm back in the block work table and I want to, I'm going to just start with this uh, TR3 and let's go to print and export and go to foundation. Those are all the sections. Let's look, see what it looks like. Ooh, we need to do some rearranging here. Um, we probably can fit this and all I'm doing is grabbing these and just moving them. I want them to just all be on one piece of paper. So let's see. There we go. Looks like that'll work. And you can go up here and rotate. So I could do that. 
and then I could move this over just to make sure none of it ends up on the other page. So now it'll only print out on one page. So let's print it. All right, next block is we'll just start over here with E3. Let's print and export. You could do rotary cutting here. Uh, that's what it would look like. But I want to do foundation paper piecing, so let's preview that. It's all on one sheet. I'm just going to make room in between everything so I have a little bit of paper to work with and print this out. All right, next block. So the way I choose foundation paper piecing over templates is if there's curves, I'm going to need a template and I'm probably going to do applique. These blocks are very small and to try to piece these curved pieces, I feel would just be time consuming and tedious for the same look. It's not impossible to do. That's how I'm doing it. But if there are straight seams in this, I'm going to be paper piecing it. So let's go to the next one, print and export, foundation, see how that looks. Looks like every one of these sections is its own. So that's fine. That's fine with me. We just need to move these around. So it's wonderful that you can move these around. And one thing that I've done is if you move these around and you like, um, okay. you like just how it's um, laid out, you can save this. But what I do is you can't really save it to a file, but if you have the ability to save it as a PDF, and I'll show you that in a minute, we can save this file and you don't have to move these around every time you want to come in here and print it. Say you messed up on one of these and you need to reprint it. You're not having to rearrange everything. All right, let's get this printed. All right, I want to show you how to save it as a PDF. At least this is the way I save it. Um, you want to go down here to page setup. And this, we are in the print screen. This is where I always hit preview, but go to page setup and we want to go to printer. And here I have it on my HP printer, but we can also go to Adobe PDF. Um, I have Microsoft print to PDF. I think that came with Windows. But if we go to Adobe PDF, I can hit OK. And then we're set up with the printer as a PDF. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go back here into preview. You can see it's all messed up again. So let me get it to where I want it. All right, I have it spread out again. And I'm going to hit the print button. And what it does is it brings up this. Where do you want to save your file? So I am going to move me out of the way. I am going to go to Dear Jane. I need a new folder. Week three. Go to week three. And then I don't remember what block this is. I think it is F8. I'm just going to put F8 there. It saved it as a PDF. And then it brings it up and shows me what it looks like. So you always have it saved. You don't have to come back in here and print it. You can just open the file and it's already laid out the way you want it. So just a little tidbit on how to save a file as a PDF rather than printing every time you come in here. All right, we have this one. These are not a lot of sections, but um, let me get these moved around. I personally am not unhappy with that. I just think it's going to be easier and it's going to be sh like my blocks will be straighter. If you think you could make these easier, you can renumber in EQ8. You can resection an E number or E number. You can resection and re renumber um, the way you feel it may work for you. If you don't want so many sections, you can try it. Um, I have done that in the past. I'm not going to do it here. All right, we'll get this printed. Okay, the last block is here, and we can foundation paper piece this. One thing that kind of bugs me about EQ8 is when you're in the preview, it's like we're previewing our pieces here, and remember how I changed it to be a PDF? 
if you forget to change it back to printing and you move all these around, it's either going to save it as a PDF if you want that, or it's uh, you're going to have to get out, change your printer, come back in, rearrange these. It's one thing that bugs me that you can't change the printer right here in this screen. So there we go. I did, did I change the printer? Let's see. I didn't. <laughs> oh, well. Um, I don't know which one this one is. F2. So I have to print it from here. But yeah. That's the only thing that bugs me is you can't change it in the preview. So I'm going to print it from here. I do have it saved, but you need to come back in here. When you go here, before you go to preview, you have to go to page setup, printer, go back to um, printer or go back to PDF, whatever you want. So yeah, a little quirk that I don't like, but I can get past it. Yes. All right. Wait. We are ready to put our blocks together. I've got it all printed out. So let's go over to our machine and start putting these together. All right, let's get started with week three. We've got all paper pieces this week. So I'm starting, I said week three. We're starting with E3 paddle wheels. Doesn't look too hard to put together. I kind of went through, figured out what size of pieces I need. Hopefully these work, I'll let you know. And, um, that's all I got. I've got the longer strips for in here, the small orange pieces, the larger orange triangles, and with the same with the white, large and small triangles. All right, let me get this all cut up and we'll get ready to put it together. All right, let's move on to our corner. I've finished the strip and we need to work with the bigger triangles here and C1 is this one and C2 is next to it. So they are going to go together like that. So let's turn it over. I'll draw it out for you. One, two, you need coverage here. So one is orange and it's going to go like that. And this is the seam I want. Which I've covered, but that's the seam I want, so I want to I want to have it come a quarter of an inch over that one, and then I'm just gonna lay this on top, and I've got coverage here, and when I flip it, it will be in the orientation that I want it to be. So, and I just put my finger on. No, I didn't. We want our sewing line to be right here lock stitch at your intersections all right there's our first two pieces no line showing which means i have coverage now the next piece we want to do is this long white piece and i just need coverage out to here but i do need to trim and this one's simple we just need to lay it on there so that we have coverage outside of these lines. Okay, there's our C3 put on. Now we want to go to C4, which is our next white larger triangle. And when I mean large, I mean of the ones that I cut. Trim. And I want my triangle to be oriented like that when I'm done. I need coverage here. So that looks pretty good. There we go. No line showing. Let's come over here to our last PC5, trim it up, and add our last orange. Larger orange. And we want our orientation to be like that. So I am going to it's probably hard to see, but there's the corner of my white fabric. I'm going to line this up with that corner so they match. And so on the line between C4 and C5. All right, that's how you do the two pieces 
out of the four in this um, E3 paddle wheel. So I'm going to finish these up and then we'll put the block together. All right. I showed you how to do these. And I did do the strip and show you how to do it, but I showed you wrong. So I'm going to redo it. So these need to be pointing in the same direction, the oranges. It's not hard to put together. I just, you know, got distracted. Anyway, I've got a copy of a copy here. Here's my A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. And I will draw this out real quick so you can see the coverage I need to start with. And I need to start with the triangles. That's the edge. And here's the two triangles. So the corner triangle is white and this is orange. I'm going to put these together before I lay them down. And I want to put white down first so it's face up. And white goes here. And I want to lay it so that it's covering all my lines. And it's pretty much a quarter of an inch over my sewing line, which is right down the middle here. Yep, I got plenty of coverage. So we want to sew on the line between A1 and A2. All right, there's my first two pieces. In the right order, I have white in this corner, orange there. Now I want to trim between A2 and A3. So fold it back. And we trim at a quarter of an inch. This is kind of a scrap piece, so that's why it looks weird, but I am going to lay that down where you can see I need coverage on it right there. I'm going to sew on this line and iron towards the piece I put on. There we go. There's that piece on. Let's turn it over. And now we're going to put on our orange triangle after we get it trimmed. And so you know where I'm going, I need coverage there. So I want to orient it this way, flip it over. I'm going to make sure my orange falls outside of this line and we should be good. All right, got our orange on. Let's put our white on. We'll trim at the B5 line. Here, let's flip it over. Points are going the same. Got it right this time. And I'm just going to line up this corner with the orange. There we go. I got it right this time. So I'm just going to throw that one away and I'm going to get this trimmed up and we can put our block together. All right, here's our E3 paddle wheels. That's what we need to have it look like. And I've got my A, B, C, D sections. So I really do feel like we need to put C and D together first and then add our A and B. So I am going to, you can line up this point and this point. Or if you cut the notches, you can see that it lines up perfectly on each end. And then we're going to sew on the line and I think I will iron this open. All right, there's my centerpiece put in. Point turned out pretty good. So we just need to add these on. And again, we can probably just go end to end with our pieces. They fit perfectly and then we'll have the seams that cross right here be a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to put both of these on. Again, I'm going to iron them open and we'll be done with our block. All right, here's my E3 paddle wheel all finished. And that is a very pleasing block. I really like that block. So let me mark that. I am keeping these on all my blocks so I can remember what they are. Next block up is F2 Kaleidoscope, and this is what we're building over here. So you have an idea of what you're looking for, looking at, I guess. So this block, it has a lot of sections to it. We have two sets of four that are identical. We have this set right here with the corner, and then this is actually identical to that with no corner. So I'm going to show you how to put these two together. And then the rest of them will be the same. And then we'll come back and put all these sections together. Okay, what we have here. These are the two different pieces we have in our block. So 
we have this these triangles that go in the corner we have these tiny little pieces both in white and orange that are these tiny pieces here and then these big squares are what are going to go inside here not too much to this block um, we just have a lot of sections that are exactly the same so let's start with this one here and then we'll just do this one and add the corner so our h1 actually our first piece we put on is the little one and then we're going to add the big one to it so let me flip this over and get these drawings out for you so that's kind of what we need to have coverage for so let's grab our first one is actually a white I need to mark these probably so I don't do them wrong. White and orange. So my white is going to go here. And I do have coverage because it gets cut off right here. But you know what? I probably could say that we could make that piece bigger. Let me change that. I'm going to say it should be two by one and a half. So let's see how it works out for me. Let's put it so we have coverage over our seam. And then I'm going to grab this orange. This is going to be a strange one. This is going to flip up and should cover everything we see there. So I think I might need to pin this. So that it stays in place. Okay. We need to sew along this line right here. Lock stitching at our seam intersections. All right. This piece is close. I modified it to be bigger for future people who want to try this method. Um, but my orange does have coverage also. So we need to trim for our third piece. And here it is. We're coming over here. We're going to fold it and we're going to trim. And depending on where you sew, if you sew outside of the seam lines, you may have to pull your fabric back. All right, let's trim it up. And take our other little tiny white piece and just line it up the best we can right here so that we have coverage. You can see it right there. And so on the line. All right, that's what our first piece looks like. I will admit I didn't, it fits, but I would want more fabric here to work with. So when I put these dimensions up on my website of the pieces I used, I'm increasing the size of this fabric here. So this is going to be exactly the same, except we're going to add a corner. So and let me turn this over, show where we need coverage to begin with. All right, this one has the white square being A1, and I'm just going to cover it like this. I'm going to pin it, and then I'm going to trim it. Maybe I should have done that on the other one. Because it really doesn't matter what's A1 or A2 or which is one or two. So this one has one and then two and then three. This one has one, two, three. I think I'm going to like this method better. All right, so I've clipped it in place. I have coverage. Now I want to go between A1 and A2, and I want to trim this piece. Yes, I have a pin there that I'm working against. Oh. All right. I am ready to get coverage with my orange piece right there. So. Yeah. I think it works better this way. So I'll let you know when I'm done, but I think I'm going to do all the rest of my pieces where the number one is here and then two and three are the little pieces. All right, there's my first piece. 
we need to go over here on the side and go between A1 and A3 and trim. Add another little teeny tiny orange piece to get coverage there. Great. There's my three pieces just like I had over here. So we're going to turn it over and we are going to put on that corner. So between those little pieces and the four, we are going to trim. Now this is where my triangle comes in that I cut. I'm just going to eyeball my point make sure it's in line and so on the line all right that's where i needed coverage and my piece falls over top of it so that's how you do a corner i showed you this one but i'm gonna go through here and change all of these to be one two three one two three one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I will get these finished and I'll let you know how that turns out for me. But I really do think that having the big piece be number one and the two smaller pieces be two and three works out way better. All right. I'm going to finish these up, get them trimmed, and then we'll put this block together. All right. So I got my pieces built. And I did do what I said where the big piece was number one and the two little pieces were two and three. The only thing I can think that it makes a difference is when these meet up, they'll be going the same way. But I am not... It just was easier for me to do the big pieces number one than two than three. Anyway, I also went ahead and put half together to make sure I was doing it correctly. And I did get nice straight lines along my edge here. So let me show you how I did that. I actually used the pin method. Ouch, and I just poked myself with a pin. All right. So let's see, which way do I want to go? I think I want to go like this. These two go together, and I'm going to go, I'm going to put the pin right in there at that corner. And then I'm going to kind of guess at where it goes in here. Oh, perfect. And then it came out in that corner. So I'm just going to use the pin to keep the pin straight. I'm going to rotate my fabrics together, my pieces making sure that pin stays straight up and down. Then I'm going to pin it. So now I can sew along my line here and I'm going to iron my seams open. Okay, there's my first two pieces and look at that straight line right there. So I'm going to do the same thing. Grab my pin, put it through the corner. Find my corner here. There we go. Straighten my pin up. And line my pieces. Make sure my pin's straight. Pin up my pieces. Sew on the line. All right, I finished out this half. I have nice straight edges here. I'm going to grab my scissors. I'm just going to cut that tail in the middle. Now, you could line up these points right here. And that is going to be quite... That's going to be hard to sew through, but we'll make it. We'll do it. And it looks like my ends line up pretty good, too. So... I'm going to pin that. You could use the pin method through here and see how it comes out. It probably could scooch a little. I think I'll use the pin method, not the centering method. Okay, through that side and that side. Now I will pin it. 
and we can sew. I pin it in a couple places so it doesn't scooch on me because there's a lot of material there. All right, it's done. That was a little difficult. I did line it up with the pin method. Um, I haven't even ironed this. Forgot about it. Been sitting there thinking about it. Um, and then I sewed it and it was straight where the pin was, but it was sticking off the edge on the other side. Um, actually, I think it was the other way around. Yes, it was. It was like this. This is the side I pinned. This is the side that was just like sticking off the edge at least an eighth of an inch. It was, it was enough that I was like, I can't accept that. So I ripped out this half past the center. And what I did was I lined up these two seams right here. I pinned it there and then I just peeled the paper off so the fabrics would work together so the paper wasn't restricting it so that the fabrics could then kind of work together and they did i started sewing here without the paper on made sure my seams right here were together and it worked out the fabrics worked together now my point isn't beautiful there's a lot going on in this block when you look at it I'll put it down. It's pretty. It was more difficult there towards the end than I thought it would be. I really thought putting the two halves together would be easier, especially being paper pieced, but it wasn't. And like I said, I just peeled the paper back and let the fabrics work together. And they did. So there you go. There's F2 Kaleidoscope in the books. All right, next up. Whew, that last one was a doozy. Hopefully this one's a little easier. This is K5 passing through and there's K5 right here. That's what we're building. We just really have two pieces here. We have these two pieces. We have these four pieces that are the same. These two pieces are the same, these four are the same. And then we've got two templates here, which are probably exactly like these on the top. So I'm gonna do two of these, or I'm gonna do this one. I'll do this one. And then I'll come back and we'll after I get them all put together, I'll show you how they go together. So let me get ready. Actually, let's go through the pieces. These big orange ones are these big orange pieces here. The little orange ones are in here. This is these two pieces. Oh, I know it is. This one, this one is these two and they go on top of here. This one are the side pieces and then these are the little pieces inside so let me get these cut apart we'll start putting it together all right i'm going to start with this one right here and we need a big orange and we need the long white piece here so i've already gone ahead and marked out so you can see the coverage we need i'm going to put my orange on so that i'm a quarter of an inch over my line, my seam right here. You don't see any lines here. I'm gonna lay this on top of it and we're going to sew on this line, lock stitch at the seams. There's our first piece put together. Don't see any lines, we got coverage. So I'm gonna set this aside. Let's go to this one. Let's see, A1 is gonna be one of these. And A2 is going to be an orange square. Let's just put these together and make sure A1's down. Let me draw some lines on the other side. All right. I put my seam in and I ripped it out because I didn't have coverage in this corner like I thought I did. So what I did was I came back. I marked a quarter of an inch above my seam that I want. So there's quarter of an inch and I laid my white piece down, made sure I had coverage on my white piece, which I do, it's a little bit bigger piece. Then I brought my orange piece back. I brought it just so it's just a little bit past this line. And so if you look straight down, we'll have coverage. And then over here, if you look straight down, we'll have coverage. So, we should have coverage this time. I'm 
putting it on that quarter inch line and I am actually clipping it to make sure it stays in place as I sew. All right, so I'm gonna sew again on that line. All right, I don't see any drawn lines, so I've got coverage. So let's turn it over and put on our third piece. Fold it over, look at that. We've got some fabric to cut off, that's good. Now, this is where this piece in the middle, this rectangle comes in and our coverage needs to be there so we've got coverage and so on this line here we go can't see any of my drawn lines which means we have coverage and i am going to finish up all my pieces and then we'll come back and we'll put the whole block together all right here's my pieces trimmed up turned over kind of set in place this is the block we're doing so this piece that sits on itself by itself is actually going to be up here and down here it's going to be on top of this piece and on the bottom of this piece because then we have them right here that's how we're going to connect and then the block is going to go together like that but the first thing we need to do is we need to put these two pieces together. So we want to do that. We want to make sure our seams cross at about a quarter of an inch. Um, I do have these notches. I did not cut them, but my notch right here is at the end of this piece. And it's probably the same over here. You can see the notch hits the end of that piece. So we can put this together. I'm going to do the same thing with this one and then we'll figure out where to go from there. So on this one, I just want to say that if you don't have the notches like I have to work with, you just will have a quarter of an inch tail and your seams here in the middle will be about a quarter of an inch away from each other. So that's what mine looks like. Looks pretty good. It's good enough for me. There is the beginning of my block. You can see I got some pretty straight lines going here. So these two pieces actually fit together and so do these. Our block is going to go together at that point right there. I think I'm going to try something that's not going to be utilizing these pieces. You could cut these out and sew them onto these edges. I want to show you what I'm going to do. Maybe a little unorthodox, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trim these tails off so I have straight edges. And I am going to sew these on right now. So I have these pieces ready to go. So we're going to have a little bit of a tail on each side. I've got my notches here to tell me. And there's a little tail over there. All right, these are the pieces I cut to cut my um, template out, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. I'm actually going to sew these on and then I'm going to trim them this way and then I'm going to put my block together along here and then I'm going to cut my square out. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to kind of center it and I'm going to sew it on and I'm going to iron it towards the top. All right. Yep. It looks weird, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my straight edge right along my block. And I'm going to trim it. All right. Now. So it's going to go together like this. Right here is going to meet. So I am going to make sure I get the correct seam and they will nest. Nest your seams, line your edges up. And you will have overhang. So there we go. You can see my seams are nested. I'm going to pin this and I'm going to sew from here top of the paper and I can see the paper here. I know you probably can't, but the paper ends right there. So I'm going to sew from there to there. I'll just mark it so you can see it. 
right there. There we go. That's what it looks like sewn. I am going to iron the seam open. All right, looks pretty weird, but that center lines up there. <clears throat> that is not the ruler I want, so I need this to be five inches. So I'm going to trim it five inches. And there we go. All right, what'd you think of that? A little too unorthodox? Would you do the same thing? Would you not do that? <laughs> I didn't want to fuss with cutting these out and getting them to line up. So, you know what? Block still looks exactly the same, and I bet this piece is exactly the same size, this one, as these are. All right, that is a that is a really pretty block. Very, very different. So K5 passing through. Another block down for week three. Okay, continuing on with week three, we have F8 church window. We have a lot of pieces here. This is what it looks like, by the way. That's what we're shooting for. So we have two identical pieces here. Two identical pieces here, two identicals, two identicals. These are almost exactly alike, so I think I'm only going to do one of these. And then I'll do one of these, one of these. This is pretty self-explanatory if you've done paper piecing. So I think that's what I'll do instead of doing like the whole block. So what do I got here? I have got this, these triangles, which are right here in all of these pieces. I've got squares, which are in the corners here. I have some more squares uh, that are going to be here. These center orange pieces are going to be squares because it's on an angle. I'm not going to try to cut that angle. I'm just going to use a square. And then the one inch squares are these tiny little pieces right there. That's the orange pieces. So the white pieces are, the triangles are here. And they're all inside of these. I have got these two are going to be squares for those smaller strips. This one is going to be on the beginning. It's the beginning of our strips. We don't need a square because we can figure that out. And then we have this big piece, which is going to be the big one in here. The third piece that we put on is going to be a square for this because we're going to be at an angle. We need a lot of coverage. And then this piece is the longer starting piece in these two. And this is these four white strips right here. So there's quite a bit going on here. Like I said, I'll run through some of these pieces. Let's start with this long skinny one here. And I'm going to turn it over and show you this is between G1 and G2. I think what I'm going to do is mark a quarter of an inch into G2. Actually, I don't need to do that because I'm going to cut it. All right. Neat coverage out here. This is rough coverage, so. <clears throat> I need this piece. And the first thing I want to do is line it up square. So I have coverage all the way around, but what I want to do is trim to my quarter inch on this one. So I am going to clip it, turn it, and trim it. So let's go on that line so that we can get the correct trim. All right. So now we need an orange and that's what these two inch squares are for and I'm going to line it up I need to get coverage into here and here and across that line so if we just kind of fold it over I get the coverage in fact I could pull it over to the right a little bit yep all right so that's how we're putting it on. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to sew on this line. All right, I have coverage on my drawn line. So let's go over and 
trim between G2 and G3. This is where I want the big white one. So I'm going to pull it over and we need coverage there. So I've got it kind of pulled over here to the right. So let's just fold it and I do get coverage. I don't see any of my lines. All right, let's sew on that line. There we go. None of my lines are showing. So I'm going to set this aside. We'll trim it later. And like I said, the little short ones are going to be exactly the same as that one. All right, let's put this little one together. So B1, B2, B3 is on the inside. And that's, we need coverage here. So we need, oh, we need these, the squares. I'm going to actually put a quarter inch line right here. Put my square on. Got coverage. Grab my one inch orange. Make sure I've got coverage there because I need that tiny little orange piece. And you can see that I've got coverage around that. All right, can't see any of my drawn lines. That's good. Let's go over here to B3 and fold it. Oh, look at that. Pretty much have a quarter of an inch. All right, let's take another of these little tiny one inch squares. Lay it out. You can see that I'm going to have coverage on my edges. There we go. Can't see my lines. Means I have coverage. So let's go to our B4, which is going to be the orange triangle, and we'll trim that up. And grab one of my triangles. It's plenty big. There's the point. And then I I'm eventually going to need coverage out here. But right now I need coverage in there. So I'm lining up this point. I'm eyeballing it with that point. All right, let's get this one sewn. Okay, so my point sticks out over the edge, which is good. I have coverage. Let's go to B5. Get it trimmed. And that's where this white triangle comes into play. I'm going to try to eyeball this point in the corner and get it sewn. All right, we got coverage on that drawn line. So our last piece is going to be just like the other one. Let's pull it back on B6 and get these seams pulled out. Let's get out the line, trim it, take one of our triangles, line it up. Sew it on. Awesome. Can't see any drawn lines there either. So that's that piece put together. We got one more piece. See, I did that one. This one's going to be, I think, even simpler than that one. So our D1 is a two inch square. Well, let me draw some lines. That's between D1 and D2. Basically the edges of the paper. That's where I need coverage. And I think what I'll do is draw my quarter inch. All right. So I'm going to line up my orange. Yeah, it's orange with my quarter inch. So I have coverage all the way around on that. I think what I'll do is pin it so it stays in place. All right. I need another one of these white triangles. And we want it to sit like this on our piece. So we'll flip it so it's right sides together. And it's going to be going straight this way. So we want to make sure we have plenty of coverage here. And I do. So. We want to sew on this line. All right. Can't see my lines that I drew. It's always a good thing. So. Next, D3 is our big orange triangle, and I'm going to grab one of those, 
and we want it to sit in place like that. We need coverage here. So you can see the lines where we need coverage. So we put it like this. Oops, it's going to sit like that. So we need to put it like this. And it's going to go straight. It's going to get flipped straight up this way. So we want to make sure we have a quarter of an inch coverage right here. And I have about a quarter of an inch right there. So we are now going to sew on this line. There we go. No drawn line showing. Let's go do our D4, which is the other side of basically a flying goose in there. We have a flying goose. Trim it. Grab. Let me draw it out so you can see where we're headed. Our white needs to fill this triangle. And it, we want it to sit like that. So... I'm going to line it up so that my point is pretty much in line with that corner. All right, no drawn line showing, and we put our last square on. These are plenty big, so we've got plenty of coverage. All right, so there we go. These are the major components of this block. So I'm going to finish up all the rest of these here and then I'm going to get them trimmed up and we will put our block together. All right, got all my pieces done and I got them trimmed and it was like putting a puzzle together, arranging all these pieces. I used my picture. I could have gone back to EQ8. Um, and looked at the sections, but it's kind of like a if you had cut just pieces of fabric and you had to put them together. We've got these pieces here and um, we need to build like the inside block with the four corners. So these go together and then we need to build this square here. So they go here and then the short sides will go in the center section and then the long sides get put on the entire block when it's done. That's how I approached it. I don't know if you will approach it that way, but it was fun. It was kind of like taking all these pieces and going, where does this go? Where does this go? So anyway, fairly straightforward. Put these two together. Um, and I'm just going to iron all my seams open and then I'm going to build this way and then this way. Iron those seams open, then I'm going to add this one on so there you go and here's what it looks like finished all right there is f8 church window that turned out really pretty i like it in orange that's what it looks like and that's what it looks like that was fun to put together very puzzly not too hard to figure out with all the paper pieces i'm really glad i paper pieced it with all those little pieces I think I'd have a pretty wonky block by the time I got out to the outside. All right, so FH church window's done. All four of our blocks are done. Um, yeah, which one do you like? That's the hard one this week. I have to say, even the, this one was very hard to do, and I'm going to be honest, I don't think it's because of the difficulty level. I'm just not a super fan of it. I like that one. That one's very different. It's really cool looking. All right, there's the four center blocks. Now on to our border block, F3. Checkerboard. All right, let's get started on TR3 checkerboard, which is one of our border blocks, and that's what it's going to look like. I'm not anticipating this being too hard. It's a lot of rectangles put together, which makes it easier rather than having angles and having to figure all that out. So here are my pieces. My long orange piece goes at the bottom. My little squares here are used in all of these pieces up here. These rectangles are gonna be over here in this piece, and then the one square is there. And the same here with the white, got one inch squares. We've got all these smaller pieces and then we've got one two three four five six seven 
yeah, seven of these four down here. So I'm just going to show you one of these because they're all pretty much the same. I don't think it's too hard of a paper piece to put together. If it ends up being, I'll come back and show you the, another one. But for the most part, it's not going to be too hard. So let's see, what one should we do? Why don't we just do this one here? I will get started with this one and we're going to start on this side. We are going to need this piece. We're going to need these pieces and these pieces. So I'm going to push those off to the side. Our A1 starts here and we're going across. Let me draw it out for you where we need coverage. Let's just draw our line all the way across. So since it's a rectangle, I am going to put two of these together. The white is going to go down first. Let's do a quarter of an inch so I know where to lay my piece. And I'm going to make sure my white has coverage all the way around. And it does. So I can hold it or clip it in place at this point. Take it over to our machine and iron it or sew it. All right, so here's where we need coverage too. So you can see as I've been doing, all our lines are covered, all my drawn lines. So pretty easy. We go to the next rectangle between A2, A3. We trim it and we're gonna add a white. We need coverage here and we need coverage out to there. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna get it. So there we go. And that's how the rest of this is going to go all the way along. So I'm going to get this finished and we'll add the bottom piece. There we go. I got all of these sewn on. So now we want to add that bottom piece. And I'm going to fold it over. I'm going to trim it and line my piece up so that I have coverage out here and I have plenty big enough piece to do that and I'm just gonna get this sewn on and iron towards that piece and this piece will be done all right there is our first piece put together I'm gonna trim all the pieces at the end and the rest of these pieces are pretty much exactly the same as this one. So I'm gonna get these finished, get them all trimmed up, and then we'll put it together. Okay, here's my TR3 checkerboard uh, border block trimmed out, and I've laid them in order. A, B, C, D, E, and F. It looks like a Christmas tree. So this is what it's gonna look like before we start putting them together. And I'm gonna start at the bottom and just start working my way up the top putting these together. So you can match seams up. You can match seams up here and then pin it and then sew along the line. They wonder if I went, nope. Huh. I guess if I could have, if I would have thought about it, I could have reordered. So I would have started B1 over here. And then I think all of these would nested. But for right now, they're all just landing on each other. So uh, iron the same way. But anyway, line your seams up. So on the line and I'm going to iron my seams open. Okay, here's my first two sections put together. I got a nice straight line going up the side. So that's what I'm going to do on the way up is I'm going to line my seams up and then pin it in place and sew on the line. And I'm gonna work my way right up to the top. There we go. That went together really easily and I love how straight my sides are. So there we go, TR3 checkerboard is in the books. All right, I'll wrap this up quick. Um, these blocks were a lot of fun to put together. As I'm looking through them in the end, I just like all of them. I, I think I like the colors I chose. I liked putting them together. Um, they're just visually appealing blocks. So 
it was a lot of fun. I don't know if I can name my favorite. I kind of like this one. I kind of like this one. This one was more difficult than I expected, but I like them all. They're all fun. So I'm throwing up my photo um, quilt for you to check out. I've added the photos of these blocks to it so you can see how it's starting to fill in. Um, it's really cool. I think that's a great feature that they added to EQ8 for you when you get done with your blocks. But anyway, hit the subscribe button notification bell. You can go along this Dear Jane journey with me. If you have any Dear Jane blocks you want to share, send them to me in the email I have listed in the link below and let me know if I can share them on my channel and I'll throw them up so um, other people can see your progress. But anyway, thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!